recorded budget presentation. Um, now we're going to begin the live session of the public hearing um, and we will have some time for clarifying questions on the budget presentation before we jump into public comment. Um, I'm joined here. My name is Emily Bird. I work in the Clean Water Initiative Program. My colleague Gianna Petito and our Clean Water Board Chair Doug Farnham and Michelle Boomhauer from Vermont Agency of Transportation. Uh, is there anything else you'd like? Do, do you want to do a full agenda overview? Or? Um, no, I don't have a printed one in front of me, so I skip the agenda okay. overview. Uh, but welcome everyone. I want to make sure we have enough time for the public comment, so. I won't belabor that. We'll just get into it. Uh, so if folks have any clarifying questions on the budget presentation and you'd like to use the raise hand function in Teams, uh, we have about five minutes or so reserved for clarifying questions um, to the extent that they are factual questions to clarify the contents of the budget. Um, and then we'll just be careful to reserve any comments for the public comment portion of the agenda. And I see that we have a hand raised. Um, yeah, hi, it's Arnie, Arnie. Arneson. Uh, I have a residence in Fair Fairly on Lake Maury. Uh, you'd mentioned that there was approximately $10.9 million uh, that was gonna be carried over to the 2023 and 2024 bud budgets. It was a 2024 and 2025. I just wanted to be sure because I think it was carried over from 23 to 24 and 25, <clears throat> approximately. Yes, uh, at the close of the prior state fiscal year 2022, there's $10.8 million of unallocated, unreserved clean water funds. And we are proposing to allocate those dollars across this state fiscal year 2024 proposed budget and the state fiscal year 2025 proposed budget, essentially spreading it out across two years to help uh, to diffuse the impact of the anticipated budget contraction that, that we're projecting for next year. Right, so so is any of that money potentially available if necessary to go to something that could occur in the 2022-2023 year? The state fiscal year 2022 was has, has closed out. We are currently in state fiscal year 2023. Uh, there is a process in state government where the budget needs to go through legislative approval. So we've already gone through the state fiscal year 2023 budget and any changes to that would require action by the legislature. So at this point, we are we pretty much have the state fiscal year 2023 budget set in stone and we are working to implement that and and we have the ability to um, work and, and make a recommendation to the legislature on state fiscal year 2024 budget, which is the, the budget we are reviewing here today. Right, so, so to follow up, is it possible to utilize some of those funds that are allocated for the 2024 year in 2023, but have it come from the 2024 bu budget? Being, being no, spent it, it, earlier, spent, spent within the prior year, but coming from the subsequent year's budget. Unfortunately, we do not have that capability without the legislature giving us the spending authority, so it will need to be going through uh, any additional appropriations will need to be following the current budget process that we are discussing today. Okay. Thank you for your question, Arnie. I see there's another hand, uh, Martha Feltis. I have a question regarding line 4.1 on the lakes and crisis fund. I know in previous years that fund has been at $50,000 and I notice it's now at 120. And in the description we just heard of the specific items, I didn't really hear an understanding of why we need the 120 as opposed to the 50. Can you explain what the plans are, please? Sure, the state fiscal year 2024 proposes for the lake and crisis funds to cover the cost of water quality monitoring and the aerator operations for Lake Carmi. And so this budget line item, the $120,000 is based on the projected cost that needed to support those activities. 
So in other words, the actual monitoring and the operation of the air rating system has is what has increased that cost, that costs expenditure. Yes, that is the basis of the, the increase to $120,000. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Martha. Okay, we have time for just one more question before we move into public comment. Not seeing any hands. Thank you for those questions. Those are really great questions. Uh, so now we're moving into the public comment portion of the agenda. Uh, today's public hearing is one of the ways that you can participate and provide public comment in this budget process. Before we dive in, I'll also just note that we have an online questionnaire that's available that you could also complete, or we'll be, we can also accept written comments if you'd like to submit <clears> those. <throat> those comments are due by November 22nd at 4 p.m. Uh, and we really appreciate everybody taking the time to join us today to share your input on, on the draft budget. Uh, so we're going to set up approximately a two minute timer for each commenter just to ensure that all folks who would like to comment have a, a chance to do so. So we'll be doing our best to, to keep track of time um, and please forgive us if we end up needing to interrupt. We just want to make sure everybody has a chance to voice their piece. Okay, and we have a list of folks who have signed up ahead of time through our RSVP online form. Uh, first up is Peter Berger. Apologies if I mispronounced your last name, Peter. Thank you, it's, it's Peter Berger. Um, oh. from the town of Fairley. And uh, um, I think the the comment and I'm hearing uh, um, Carmine described as a lake in crisis and, and uh, um, during the summer and, and fall September period of, of this past year, uh, Maury was, uh, um, had a significant uh, cyano bloom and I'm not sure whether it's, you know, the availability <sighs> Uh, of monies for a feasibility study or uh, um, how we would proceed to, you know, enter into that category. It's, you know, the, at this point, the impact of the cyano on, on Lake Maury is significant. And uh, um, I think the town is working hard with the Lake Association and, uh, you know, the community to, to, to try and figure out how to, how to access the, you know, the, the process. And, you know, we've had uh, Oliver Pearson and Mark Mitchell from uh, Lakes and Ponds down. And, and so I think that that's our concern is that it seems to be, you know, that Maury's being overlooked in this in this process and, you know, being put off for, for a couple of years in the budget season when we need to access it, you know, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Appreciate your comments. I should have mentioned that we will be recording all comments and putting together a responsiveness summary at the close of the public comment period, and we'll be sure to respond to folks' comments as part of that process. Next up on our list of public comment is Albert Perry. Hi, Albert, if you can just unmute yourself. Thank you. How's that? That's great, thanks. Yes, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, Albert Perry, I, a resident of Middlebury and a longtime summer resident of Lake Carmi in Franklin, Vermont. Uh, I want to thank the board and all, everyone who put this uh, review together. It's uh, uh, obviously very comprehensive and complex. And uh, frankly, uh, for uh, someone who's not directly involved in the budgeting process, uh, a little daunting. Uh, with that said, uh, my, my questions have to do with uh, not the budget itself so much as the process for implementing what's in the budget. Uh, I, I'm uh, uh, struck by the uh, importance of the Clean Water Board's responsibilities to, uh, quote, restore, maintain, and improve the waters of the state. Uh, what, a, what a tremendous task, responsibility. Uh, 
and and only recent years have have that been uh, put in the statute. Uh, and I think it's so uh, just a wonderful step uh, forward. My my one of my questions is uh, regarding Lake Carmi in particular, the lake in crisis. Uh, is is there? We know there's a crisis response plan, but from the from the uh, Clean Water Board's point of view, is there any? Do you have any special focus or uh, summary of what the plan is uh, for restoring Lake Carmi? And is is there a way? of uh, following that plan, not just this year, but through the years until the restoration is achieved. I know that's a, a significant question. Uh, it's, I think it's important. Uh, really grateful that uh, you all on the board are, are, uh, are there and uh, have this have this function. I uh, just like to add uh, on a personal note. Uh, I've been uh, enjoying Lake Carmi uh, since I was a child, uh, and and now I uh, my objective is to see whatever can be done that my not my children can enjoy it but my grandchildren can enjoy it. Uh, the, the last several years have not been encouraging. Uh, decades ago, in the 50s and 60s, uh, we had cyanobacteria uh, blooms, blue green algae blooms, uh, just about every year. They were, I would say, commonplace and expected but compared with today, uh, quite short-lived and uh, much, much less significant in terms of uh, uh, amount and, uh, and duration. So uh, I will close by saying thank you for what you're doing. I would like to ask, <clears throat> if possible, could there be a summary of this proposed budget as it applies to Lake Carmi, our lake in crisis, provided before the end of the public commentary period. Thank you very much. Thank you, Albert Perry. Appreciate your comments. OK, next up is Bruce Durgan. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. My name is Bruce Durgan, and I'm <clears throat> representing uh, Lake Maury in Fairleigh, Vermont. Um, it's a lake that's very near and dear to me personally for 60 year family relationship with Lake Maury. And <clears throat> in the last 15 to 20 years, I've been very active with the Lake Maury Protective Association the Lake Maury Foundation and the Lake Maury Commission, all of which focus on water quality. Um, and we are, as has been referenced by our uh, fellow select board member, Peter Berger, uh, definitely a lake that's in crisis at this point. And we're grasping at straws to figure out how we're going to go from a, <clears throat> a lake in crisis back to a lake that has been pristine over the last um, X number of years. Um, we've got a lot of dedication to the lake through lake monitoring program, greeter program, and all of the other basic tools that other lakes have as well. Um, but at this point, we are really making an outcry to the state to see where we can get some money to fund, first of all, a feasibility study, and then second of all, the alum treatment that follows. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I've done a lot of research in terms of other alum treatments, and as everyone I think is aware, uh, one was completed on our lake in 1986, was very successful. We're in year 36 of that, 
where the expected life on these programs are more in the 20 to 25 range. So uh, it's now time to um, renew the alum treatment is the, is the leaning that uh, lakes and ponds through the good work of Oliver and his folks. Uh, but we just make an outcry for getting the ball rolling on first of all, the first step, the feasibility study, um, and then second of all, to help us with the implementation of that plan. Um, we have a dedicated team, local, uh, that's very, very dedicated and longstanding roots in the lake uh, to assist in any way that we can. But at this point, we uh, are standing with, with our palms raised upward to the sky, looking for uh, financial assistance and certainly hearing um, the depth and structure of the Clean Water Board and the money that they have available, um, we would like to tap into that and get the ball rolling um, to meet your objectives of clean water in the state and our local objective of the same. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate your comments. Next up is Greg Allen. Good morning, everybody. First off, thank you very much to the Clean Water Board for making this uh, opportunity for us to make some commentary. It's really a, a cool venue, so thank you very much again. You've already heard from three folks from Lake Maury, so you get the sense that we uh, have had some significant cyanobacteria blooms this summer. I represent the Lake Maury Commission, which is a group of five folks that report directly to the Board of Selectmen. And we have a lot of responsibilities regarding milfoil, et cetera, et cetera. But this year we spent a great deal of time and angst uh, trying to answer questions regarding cyanobacteria. The, the lakes and ponds folks have basically pointed us in the direction that of having internal phosphorus loading. We don't have any external phosphorus that is of significance in this uh, scenario right now. And my appeal, like as Bruce and Peter has mentioned to you, is to somehow find some funds to assist us, please, with the feasibility study that will be required by, by the ANC for us to get a chemical or some type of a permit for remediation. So I thank you again very much and have a great day. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate your comments. Um, next up is Ernest Engelhardt. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, my wife and I have had a, a camp on Lake Carmel since 1991, and actually, um, we've been enjoying the lake since uh, about 1980. I just wanted to make a few points. Um, I noted, I note that in the uh, plan innovation is is listed in tier two um, rather than tier one I would strongly suggest that innovation be included in tier one if at all possible uh, innovation is to reduce phosphorus and other pollutants that are coming into not only Lake Carmi but these affect all of the lakes and the streams in the state of Vermont. In the long term, I think as much money as possible should go toward innovation, innovative practices. Um, dredging is not innovative. This is in particular for Lake Carmi. Along the shoreline where there are weeds, but in particular at the outlet. Going into a uh, small reservoir below that. Um, there used to be a time when there were two four foot diameter culverts in there and in the spring and, and in the summer when we had water event, uh, rain, heavy rain events, you could visibly see the surface water pouring through those, clearing up the lake, uh, particularly what was in the surface. In particular, uh, in, in 2017, um, I would I would strongly suggest that be some that we take a look at the outlet below just below the lake. It's almost now uh, clogged with 
with Phragmites and other very strong weeds so that the flow out of Lake Carmine is extremely slow, if at all. Um, um, we support the alum treatment and are very happy that uh, the, there are funds available to support a Lake Carmine alum feasibility study. I hope that that study works well and that it could also apply to Lake Moray and other the lakes around the state. Um, my last comment uh, relates to improvements made in various areas. Um, there are a lot of uh, percentages of things that are provided to us, and uh, very importantly, Oliver Pearson is is careful to identify what's estimated and what is actual. At a farm meeting we went to a few weeks ago, someone mentioned that 95% of the improvements come from the Agency of Agriculture. And talking to a few people after the meeting, they felt that that meant that 95% of the phosphorus coming to the lake has been eliminated. While that sounds nice, um, it's important for all of us to remember that estimates are just that. The lake the condition of the water in the lake is a reflection of what the situation is in the lake. And as we go forward, I hope we continue to identify actual missions versus um, estimate. Those are my comments. I want to thank the board very much for all this important work that you folks are doing. Uh, like Al Perry said, it's complex and confusing to a lot of us. And we appreciate the tremendous amount of effort that's been, been made um, for clean water uh, improvements in the state and uh, at Lake Carmine. Thank you. Thank you, Ernie. Appreciate your comments. Um, next up is Edwin Leach, but looking through the list of attendees, I don't see that they are in attendance unless they call in. Edwin, are you with us? If you are on the call in, you can use star six to unmute. OK, I don't believe that they were able to make it. Um, next up is Peter Benevento. Yeah, Pete, Pete Benevento here. Um, I'm the president of the uh, Lake Carmi Campus Association and vice president of the Franklin Watershed Committee that works to improve the watershed surrounding Lake Carmi. Um, again, I too would like to thank the board for all your work and for all your attention that you've, you've given to, to Lake Carmi and consideration that you've given to Lake Carmi. Um, we have been designated a, 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 a state impaired lake for decades. And we have had a federally approved DM, TMDL since 2009. And then more recently, we have been declared a, a lake in crisis. Um, so there's, I, I don't think that uh, there's any doubt that we, we need the attention of the Clean Water Board and the funding to help improve our waters. Um, again, and I mentioned this the other week, we are, we are home to the largest state park in the lake, in the state. We are the fourth largest inland lake in the state, and we have 311 camps surrounding the lake. So there are a lot of people that recreate around Lake Carmine. Um, again, uh, we appreciate the, the funding that has been designated for the lake in crisis for the last few years. We appreciate the proposed increases and hope they stay uh, in the budget. Um, we also appreciate the, the allocations for the feasibility study for the alum treatment. We, we have never had a treatment, uh, a chemical treatment for blue-green algae in Lake Carmine. We've never had a chemical treatment for anything in Lake Carmine. Um, and we appreciate the fact that you are allocating this money for a feasibility study. We also ask that you consider that in the future um, that we have an allocation for a for an alum treatment in Lake Carmi, if that feasibility study warrants it. Um, again, on behalf of all the people at Lake Carmi, we thank you for your efforts 
and um, we look forward to the to the final budget being approved uh, with those allocations for Lake Carmine. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Next up is James Maroney. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, 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 I'm I'm here to uh, to uh, comment on the uh, what I perceive as an ongoing uh, effort by the Clean Water Board and for that matter, by the state of Vermont to, to ignore uh, uh, the, the problem, uh, the contribution of, of what you refer to as agriculture. Agriculture is, is not the problem. The, the problem is conventional dairy. Uh, uh, it, and um, the uh, uh, $50 million seems like a tremendous amount of money, which is being spread all over the, all over the state for, for various and sundry uh, projects, uh, but the um, but forty five percent of the problem could be eliminated, or at least cut in half if the state were to ban conventional dairy, uh, conventional farming. Um, the three things that conventional dairy uh, does that impact water quality uh, are the importation of six hundred thousand tons of grain, the importation of forty thousand tons of fertilizer, artificial fertilizer. And the overstocking of more than one cow for every three acres under management on which that cow's feed is harvested and her manure is spread. These three practices go unmentioned in uh, uh, in um, uh, the uh, so-called required agricultural practices uh, rules, uh, and they go unmentioned in uh, in the uh, uh, in the uh, so-called clean water budget. Uh, I, I have here a, a, a chart, which I think it, I'm hoping you will all uh, recognize. And and here in, in the middle, it tells us that the, that the that the the lake uh, can can absorb f 500 uh, metric tons of phosphorus, but it's getting over here uh, 817, which is over here 317 too much, 317 of which two thirds, 66% is attributable to um, conventional dairy. Uh, and so far as I know, uh, from, uh, the, uh, the TMDL tasked conventional dairy in 2015 with reducing its contribution by 66%. And they've achieved, I think, something like 11. Now, 11% is not nothing, but it's a lot closer uh, to nothing than it is to 66%. And I'm wondering where, uh, if you if you look at this problem from a from a uh, bang for the buck uh, uh, point of view, the state could could cut this uh, uh, could get achieve its clean water uh, objectives all over the state, not just in Lake Carmi, where the where the uh, situation is acute, um, but all over the state. Uh, they could achieve uh, that their their water quality standards by banning conventional dairy. I'm not talking about agri dairy per se. I'm not talking about agriculture per se. I'm talking about conventional dairy. And the state has a 60-year history of looking the other way to protect this industry, which, by the way, is not feasible. I'm a retired dairy farmer. Is not feasible from an economic point of view anyway. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're all, I was just going to give you the, the warning on the time. Thank you for your comments. Um, appreciate your attendance. Next up on the list is Kyra Landon. And I do not believe that they were able to make it based on the attendees I can see here. But just in case Kyra is the one who called in, if you want to unmute, you start there. Next up is Dwight Arneson. He is Dwight here. Does not appear that Dwight was able. Yeah, oh, hi. I, already... I am here. Great, great. Oh. I, I, I had already asked my questions earlier with with regard to the budget and the uh, excess funds that you were moving ahead to 24 and 2025. 20, so uh, only thing to add is, is, is that along with, with Bruce and Greg and P Peter, uh, with regard to Lake Quarry, uh, you know, we, we obviously need funds as quickly as possible to get a feasibility st study done. 
because of the fact that not only do we have a lot of homeowners around the lake uh, who were unable to use the lake towards the latter part of the sum summer, but we also have Lake Mori Resort on the south end and the Al Aloha Camps, uh, both on the west side of the lake and on the north si side of the lake, that if there is a, a continuation of the serious Sayano out outbreak like we had this past sum summer, it will severely impact the economics of the town of Fairley and will possibly lead to uh, the loss of quite a bit of business for Lake Mori Resort on the south end and the probability that the summer camps may not be able to open along the lake. So uh, just, just a plea that there is a absolute necessary need for funds to get a feasibility study done as soon as possible. And as Bruce had mentioned earlier on, uh, there is also the need for a treatment to be done as soon as possible so that we don't lose the summer 2023 season, which again would have a very, very severe economic impact upon the town of Fairley and upon all the residents that live around there, as well as all the boaters who come to fish in the lake as well. Thank you. Thank you, Arnie. Appreciate your comment. And last up on the folks who signed up ahead of time is Jared Carpenter, but I don't believe Jared was able to join us. Okay, so we have time for probably one or two additional comments. If anyone who was unable to sign up would like to voice comment, please feel free to raise your hand using the raise hand teams function. Okay. Not seeing any, um, I think we can move to the portion of the agenda where we will wrap up and discuss our next steps. So want to thank everybody for joining us today and to voice your comment. As I mentioned earlier, we will be compiling all of the public comment that we receive through this public hearing and the online questionnaire, as well as any additional written comments that we receive following the end of the public comment period, which closes November 22nd at 4 p.m. Uh, so please take a visit to our Clean Water Board webpage to learn more about the budget and ways to comment if you're interested. Um, immediately following the close of the public comment period, we will be working to put together a responsiveness summary of public comment and working to respond to comments that we've received that way. Uh, the Clean Water Board will reconvene on December 7th at their next Clean Water Board meeting. There will be details posted on the Clean Water Board webpage about that meeting, and we'll be sure to get announcements out to our stakeholder listserv. So we welcome folks to attend to learn about the outcomes of the public comment period. And at that board meeting, the Clean Water Board will be making their final budget recommendation, which will then later be folded into the, the governor's budget recommendation presented to the legislature in January. And then it will go through the legislative review process, um, hopefully on track to be authorized by the spring for implementation beginning July 1st of 2023. So that's where we're at in the overarching budget process um, and some of the near term milestones. Just to reiterate, public comment period closes November 22nd and the Clean Water Board will be reconvening on December 7th. Anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, I just wanted to say um, on behalf of the other board members, I appreciate the thanks, but I do think that the board plays, it's a piece of the puzzle, but in my opinion, it's a small piece of the puzzle. The, the overwhelming majority of the work is done by dozens, if not hundreds of dedicated state and municipal employees that are out there doing this work every day. So those are the ones that I really want to thank. We talk about millions of dollars that translates into thousands of people's hours of work, hard work every day. So I think that we have we're we are in a position now with our waterways that we, you know, recognized seven years ago or more, you know, formally recognized in the law that that Vermont does not want to be in. And we're fighting our way out of that. And I think it's going to take us many more years to get to a state where we're happy with the, the state of the waterways in Vermont. So 
it is um, a long struggle and people are spending thousands of hours. So I wanted to thank all the, the state and municipal employees that do this. And I do wanna thank all of you for showing up and engaging and giving us your comments. I think that's a critical part of the process as well. Um, I know that going into the 2023 legislative session, you know, um, we'll be thinking about how our programs are running right now. I do think that the Clean Water Board has a specific charge and it's focused on recommending a budget each year. And, and then it kind of doesn't have direct oversight or direct interaction um, after a certain point, right? So we we have a role, but it's not a comprehensive role. So I think, um, I know I'm being a little bit vague there, but hopefully we can build some of that into our responses to people's questions today to kind of clarify what the board can and cannot do, what the board should and should not do um, based on our statutory authority. Um, as a lifelong Vermonter, I'm always very concerned with overstepping any authority I'm given in any way. So I, I don't want to see the board overreaching. Um, but we also need to do everything we can to fulfill our mission, particularly for lakes like Carmi and Mori that are um, seeing real short-term impacts from the conditions of those lakes. So thank you all for coming today and thank you for, for sharing your perspectives. It is extremely helpful. And Secretary Moore, I don't know if you want to say anything as well. Just would also add my thanks. Um, the broad public engagement is integral to our ability to do this work. Obviously, Vermont is fortunate to have um, not only the, the lakes mentioned today, but but more than 800 inland lakes and ponds, um, as well as thousands of miles of streams and rivers. And so it really takes um, a, a very broad approach to accomplish our goals and public participation is an integral component. And so just thank you to all of you for making time, for engaging in this work, for sharing your priorities. Um, and we we look forward to, to reflecting, um, being able to reflect back to you based on what we've heard today and producing a final recommended budget in the coming weeks. Thank you. With that, I think we, we can conclude today's Clean Water Budget public hearing. Thanks again, everyone, for taking the time. We'll be posting the minutes and a recording of the live session of this public hearing if anyone wants to refer back to that in the future. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Emily.